Oh no, what are we gonna do? Prices of old film cameras are going through the roof. I don't know how we're ever gonna get out of this. Lucky for us, there are a few brave souls still making film cameras in the year of our Lord, 2022. So let's take a look at a few of those. Welcome back to Overexposed. It's like an investment channel, but the opposite. While there are tons of good used options, out there available on eBay for you to spend your hard-earned dollars on. What if you're from an alternate universe where there were no cameras made in the last 100 years? Or what if you hate used things? People are gross. Today, we're gonna take a look at six of the best options currently available to purchase new. The first camera on the list and the, is likely the camera that's available at any supermarket near you. The department store special, the plastic fantastic, still in service by little old church ladies everywhere. It's a disposable 35 millimeter camera. No one's ever gonna mistake these for having really good image quality. In fact, it's not as much image quality as it's image mediocrity. But the price is right and there's no denying that these little cameras manage to capture most of what's special about film. The exposure latitude of color negative film. That vintage, that subdued, muted color palette. And the mystery of taking your disposable camera to the grocery store, although I don't think we can do that. Most folks still can't do that. But sending your photos off and the curiously specific role of 27 exposures then coming back to you and seeing what exciting memories that you've managed to preserve. These little 9, 10, 11, 12, inflation, 14, 16. These, these cameras are a ton of fun. So the camera that you're gonna encounter most often, still being manufactured today, is it disposable? These cameras will always have a special place in my heart. The very first camera that I ever used was a disposable camera. So for you guys out there looking to get into film at a very cheap price, absolutely, highly recommend picking up a disposable camera. But what if you get tired of poisoning the environment from all the excessive plastics and different materials that are used up in the manufacturing of a disposable camera? Well, what if you're looking for something a little more substantial? What we don't have in modern, professional, newly manufactured film cameras, we have a ton of these, and right here I have the Lomography disposable camera. We have a ton of these little disposable plastic cameras um, that are capable of being reloaded. So that would be my second recommendation on the list is, these are not marketed as exclusively disposable cameras, although they are very cheap. I think with a roll of film, this camera is $27. It's cheap. It's got plastic lenses, but it is built a little more substantial than the other one. Nikon, Ilford, Double Film, lots of other companies make similar plastic, fantastic, reusable, disposable cameras. These feel much nicer than the chintzy plastic that the traditional supermarket disposable cameras are made out of. And a lot of times they have really cool effects like has colored films that can go over the flash. So pretty cool little camera. But you know, what if your budget's a little higher? What if you're a dentist or a doctor? or an attorney, scratch that last one, and you're looking for something a little more upstream in the marketplace, that brings us to the still manufactured Laka MP. This is actually the still manufactured successor to the Laka M7. The camera has adopted many of the retro design features from the Laka M7. It does have the ability to stand alone mechanically though. In the event that it runs out of batteries or the light meter stops working, the camera it can function in an all manual state. So really cool. You've got the good Laka build quality. It's obviously a gorgeous camera, but some of the features that the camera has, it includes an M3 top metal film advance lever, knob and rewind design, and M3 top frame line adjust lever, and you're still able to load the film through the bottom of the camera. They sell it in a couple of different color schemes, including black chrome, black paint, and silver. As I alluded to earlier, the camera does have a built-in light meter that works from minus two exposure to 20 plus. The viewfinder is available in your typical Laka viewfinder magnifications, 0 0.58, 0 0.72, and 0.85 times. And these modern viewfinders have coatings on them to reduce flares and ghosting effects in the viewfinder. This model has been in Laka's range since 2003, just as Buffy the Vampire Slayer was coming to a close. Anyone who's in and around the photography scene knows Laka is tremendous quality, Really, really nice cameras, excellent image quality. I mean, this is the top, top end of 35 millimeter film photography, but comes at a great price. These are very expensive. B&H Photo prices one of these cameras, whew, $56.95, $5,695. So these plainly aren't for everyone, but a really nice camera if your pocketbook will allow it. I've already showed you one Lomography camera. Let's talk about another. The Lomography Lubital 166 Plus. They call this a loving recreation of the classic Russian twin lens camera. 
This camera is kind of neat because it can use 35 millimeter film or 120 film. As with the Laka just before, this camera has fully manual controls and it has really nice glass lenses. It's got a threaded cable release, a tripod mount, and a hot shoe flash sync port. Like any TLR though, you're gonna be stuck with the weird upside down world as you try to compose your images through the uh, top of the camera, but eventually you get used to it and it's second nature. Uh, another great offering from Lomography, but these are a little bit expensive. Although it's out of stock right now, these go for $399. So a little bit expensive, but for what you get, all in all, a pretty great deal from Lomography. I think I've said on this channel enough about instant film cameras, uh, specifically the Instax. I've got a video out there with my opinion on Instax film, but what if you wanna shoot actual Polaroid frames? There's a camera for Mint. It's called the Mint SLR670X. This is a Polaroid style, single lens, reflex camera. A four element lens, manual focus, with a fixed aperture of f8. Shutter speeds range from two, one two thousandth of a second all the way down to a half second, and then bulb mode and T mode as well. These are really nice cameras, super sleek and sexy, collapsible design. Uh, it's gonna give you that instant film fix. It's a more modern take on those classic Polaroid design that everybody loves. I think the range goes from about $1,000 to 1200 depending on the bells and whistles that you want on the camera. These are really cool cameras, great looking obviously, and if you want to get into that Polaroid format, um, this is the camera, this is the top of the line camera. So a really cool camera to use, check it out if you're interested. I think we've covered a broad base of uses, you know, we had instant cameras, disposable cameras, a really high-end Laka camera, and then a more traditional TLR camera. Lots of different kinds of cameras still being manufactured today. Those are some of the ones that I've handled that I think are really cool. If you're if you're determined to not buy anything used, um, these are all really great options and give you some, and these all represent great entry points into the world of film photography. All these cameras still being made new today. So check one of these out. I'm going to post some links in the description for you guys to find some of these cameras and I would appreciate it if you're gonna buy one of these cameras use one of my links but thanks so much for watching my video guys and we'll see you guys next time